This year there are some exciting and important updates in Merkel cell carcinoma. Uh, we had sig signals from a couple of years ago that suggested uh, that there might be efficacy and durability uh, like we're seeing this year, but this is an exciting validation uh, really in three areas. Uh, in treating Merkel cell carcinoma in the first line, uh, in treating it after having uh, had chemotherapy, and uh, the newest data uh, presented by Suzanne Topalian that our group is also involved in, in the neoadjuvant setting. So there's strong implications in all of those areas that there's an important role for immune therapy that is really far more effective than chemotherapy. We break into some of the results, some of the numbers attached to these findings. Sure. So at the high level, there are, I would say the efficacy and in terms of initial response is very similar between immune therapy and chemotherapy. The striking difference is the vast majority, 70 to 80 percent or so, of patients who respond initially to immune therapy stay in response, we now know, for one or two or three years or hopefully beyond. Indeed, in most cases after they stop immune therapy. In striking contrast, even though the initial response rates are almost the same for chemotherapy, those responses are not durable. The vast majority, 80, 90 percent, will progress within weeks or months of an initial response. So there's an enormous difference in the durability of the responses. And in terms of any long-term survival benefits when it comes to either disease survival, you mentioned the first line and second line events, and then overall survival, how is this translating into, well, real tangible benefits for patients? So a, a caveat for directly comparing immune therapy to chemotherapy are there have never been, and I suspect there will never be, direct comparison studies in Merkel cell carcinoma between immune therapy and chemotherapy. That ship sailed. Uh, there was an opportunity to do that a number of years ago, but once the results started coming out, basically doctors and patients said, we're not going to put people on chemotherapy. So we are left now with historical data. The good news is the comparisons between multiple retrospective historical chemotherapy studies they're very similar to each other, the chemotherapy data, and they are night and day different to immune therapy. So we are stuck with comparing uh, with retrospective historical data, but basically, especially in the setting of having received and uh, not responded ultimately to chemotherapy, the results are amazing. For Avelumab, for example, about a third of patients are doing extremely well years out, whereas not a single person was alive, period who received chemotherapy after, uh, you know, after having a refractory Merkel cell carcinoma. So the results are just black and white. Pretty compelling data. Absolutely compelling data. Okay, and when it comes to the future, I suppose, of Merkel cell carcinoma, you've mentioned that all of these trials are changing care now. What do you see coming up in the near future or in the long-term view? So the major story now, I think we, clearly know there's an enormous difference between the durability of responses between immune therapy and the lack of durability for chemotherapy. That is now really clear as of 2018 ASCO. What the, the two huge problems are we can't predict who's going to respond. Roughly half or a little more will respond in a durable way uh, in Merkel cell carcinoma to immune therapy. We can't predict that and we also don't have a single clear winner in terms of how to help patients who have refractory disease, uh, uh, immune therapy refractory disease. So those are the two areas in which I think uh, we need intensive research and there are signals for uh, how we're going to address those things but there is not anything like consensus yet about how to deal with those two problems. Well, that's something to talk about come ASCO 2019, at least. There will be plenty uh, that needs to happen uh, in terms of uh, going back to the drawing board now and figuring out who's going to respond and among those who do not respond, how we help them.